So this is video 10 on how to create a bus bar rising uh, bus bar arrangement. So following off from the previous video we can see we copy these two boards here. Um, ideally what we want to do, we want to move them over a bit and give a bit of space to them. So I'll just move them up a bit. Um, the other thing we need to be wary of is the, the, the ratings of the bus bars that we're going to apply because obviously as these are copies of boards we can see the rating of each board which is a maximum in this case of 52 amps and on DB2 again 52 amps and also we need to be mindful of the fault level because the bus bar selections will also look at the fault rating of the bus bar selector so you need to get a feel for the supply fault level and the loadings that you anticipate putting together to form your rising bus bar having done that what we then need to do is go to the edit section into general and we need to go into the section bus bar groups we need to create a subset of bus bars from the program to select from so we go into here and add the selection. So I'm going to select between a current rating of say um, 25 amps and 200 amps. And I want a short circuit rating of greater than at least um, 17 kA. Let's go for 18. And then we'll run a search on that. Now this will give you a search criteria there is a maximum of 50 buzz bars so I've, what I've got to do is bring that down a little bit so if I change the rating down to let's say 14 ka okay that that's again saying I need to reselect my search criteria so you can see here having selected the greater than 18 really what I should have done is selected less than 18 ka um, and run the search and that finds 20 buzz bars it's always tempting to try and put too much information in here a common mistake lots of people make and I've noticed it during training they will try and be extremely explicit on the data that they enter in terms of um, information such as the exact size the exact number of poles and if you have that com combination it isn't suited in the database it just won't find anything number of poles you can get away with you can usually say well I only want to look at six or four or three pole motors um, a buzz bar section so you can actually um, apply that that whittles down the selection a little bit further. So this comes up with a range of buzz bars for us, which we can then OK. So we now have a, a buzz bar group selection from the Edit General. So we've now gone through that process. The next stage on the Insert Electrical menu is to put what we call a tap array in, where we put the tap array and connect into the distribution boards. So what we do, we select the tap array and we select the fact that it's a vertical tap. So I'm going to have a rising buzz bar to the right hand side of these. So what I then do is say the number of buzz taps is two, one to each board. The default buzz length would ideally be the distance between the floors. So let's use an ad hoc value of um, four meters between floors. And then let's say the taps are on the left. When I select OK, what I then do is click once, drag my mouse and let go, and that creates the buzz tap arrangements. And then what I can do is interconnect the cable from the top of the buzz bar section. Now, because I've selected the upper one on the list on the uh, the, the, the uppermost buzz bar tap off, it doesn't know whether you want to put in a cable or a buzz bar. I, if I anticipate putting a cable in there, is this a buzz bar section? No, it's not. I'm going to have a cable coming off to there, so it gives you a choice. And I'll just put a meter in there, putting in the reference uh, DB4. Same process with the buzz tap. Notice it doesn't ask me that anymore because it knows there's a buzz bar above it. That's to DB3. And then what I can do is insert a buzz bar section from my main distribution board into the bottom of the buzz bar tap off. And I could give it a length. And what I can also do is apply the buzz bar group. So it will select from that buzz bar group. So having created the buzz bar, what we then do is run the calculation and that gives us the size of our buzz bars. But again, we can see here on these boards we've got issues which we'll discuss later on. So the idea is, is to set up the buzz bar group to start with by noting the fault level that you're anticipating, the loadings that you're anticipating the buzz bar being able to handle, setting up the buzz bar group in the general information and then setting up the rising buzz bar arrangement 
and then deciding whether you're tapping off with cables or bus bar sections.